Welcome back, fuckers. All right, on today's episode video, we're going to be running through the Atflia pod and how to use it and how to use it well so that you can find targets on the ground to put bombs on them. So let's get cracking. We're going to bring up the rearm window. So the pod that we're after can only go on the left-hand cheek station, so station number four. I'm going to come down here, pod. We've got two pods we can choose from. So there's the older one, the ANAAQ28 Lightning Targeting Pod, which is the old one. There's a video in my previous uh, F18 for Dummies series that I did. If you want to watch the video on how to use that, you can. But today we're going to go through the newer one, the Atflir Advanced Targeting Forward Looking Infrared Targeting Pod, ANASQ228 Atflir. You put that on there, and we're going to load him up. While we are waiting for that to happen, we're going to quickly cover Copy. the keybinds you're going to need in this tutorial. So while that is doing that thing, let's go through. So first things first, complete. to turn on the AtFlir pod when it gets loaded. Uh, this is our FLIR panel here. So we've got our off standby on. You've got your LTD slash R, which is our laser target designation slash ranging switch. That's to arm our laser so we can laser targets on the ground for our weapons. And then you've got your laser surge track. Okay, LST slash NFLR. Okay, off on. That is it. We're getting our targeting pod fitted right now. Let's get that loaded. See in a second. Say rearming complete. Rearming complete. And we can confirm we've got an at flare on our left hand cheek station. If we go to external view, there she is. All right, she's fitted to the jet all right so we're just going to go ahead and turn that on to standby and it's going to do its thing so in your tack page your FLIR if you've got a FLIR fitted will be in the tack menu page you hit FLIR and it says ready lined out and it says not timed out so it's doing its its checks its startup checks warming up all the rest of it all right let's talk about keybinds let's get into this just control so your keybinds you will need to slew the targeting pod, you're going to need your throttle designator controller. Okay, so this is what's going to move. It's also known as the TDC. So if you hear people in videos or in DCS when you're talking to them saying, oh, you've got to use your TDC, it stands for throttle designator controller. And we need to bind down, left, right, up, as well as throttle designator controller depressed. So all of those you need, down, left, right, up. If you've got a little mini joystick on your HOTAS, you can also bind it, which is what I've done, in the axis commands, throttle designated control horizontal, throttle designated control vertical. That is it. If you have a HOTAS, uh, the Warthog, the Thrustmaster Warthog HOTAS, um, I'll open this up real quick. If you want to copy that, just pause the video and put these in. Um, this will make your HOTAS nice and smooth to slow around. This is the best. I've uh, been mucking around with the, the curves on it. So that is what you want to do. Do it for both. Dead zone 3, saturation X100, saturation Y65, curvature 30. That is for the X axis. And then for the Y axis, it's the exact same, 3, 100, 65, and 30, but just invert the Y axis. Okay, and that'll make your HOTAS slew nice and smooth. So there you go. Just rewatch that if you need to. So that's the first part. TDC, left, right, up, down, and depress. We also need our... Uh, let's get back into... All these, we need these ones here. Sensor control switch, aft, depress, forward, left, right. So aft, forward, left, right, and sensor control switch, depress. So I call it, I'll, I'll no doubt call it a shitload of times in this video because I can't help it. If I say sensor select left, I'm referring to this switch. Sensor control switch, left, right, forward, aft, depress. You got that. Next one is cage slash uncage. All right, we need that button, and we also will need radar elevation up, radar elevation control down. Okay, so just make sure you bind all this stuff before we start so you can have a play around. And the last one you'll need is undesignate slash nose wheel steer switch. Okay, is what we need to have bound. So all of those buttons you will need to use your targeting pod and your JHAMX correctly. Right. Let's quickly run through the first thing you need to worry about. So when you've got a targeting pod fitted, we also will have a JHAMX or your pilot can have a JHAMX. So to make sure you've got a JHAMX fitted, you just press the uh, backslash or the, sorry, the 
the backslash key, bring up your ground crew menu, and then we're going to go change helmet mounted device. If it's daytime, your pilot will have a Jahamix already installed. Uh, but if it's nighttime and you want to have a Jahamix for whatever reason, you can switch between an MVG and a Jahamix. So it's already got a Jahamix, but we'll do it anyway. Request HMD installation. Copy. Copy, and then it'll say Jahamix installed. HMS installed. All right, so now we've got a Jahamix on. Our pilot is wearing it. You can see there, if we zoom in on him, that helmet, how it's the, uh, the goggles kind of stick out off his forehead. That's the J-Hemix on his visor. How do we turn the HMD on? So we're going to quickly cover this. I've done a video on J-Hemix alignment, but it's super important if you're going to use the targeting pod and the cool feature that you can do, which we'll go through in the end of this video on how to uh, spot targets and stuff. We can use our J-Hemix to designate targets on the ground with our eyeballs, which is pretty fucking sweet. So you're going to turn your J-Hemix on. That's your J-Hemix on off switch HMD. You can tell it's on because we get our HUD information when we move our head around. Yeah, it displays our HUD stuff right here. You're going to come into your bit menu. So it should automatically be on this page when you start the jet up for the first time. You're going to go displays and we need this to say HMD P bit go is what it's going to say. When you first load up the jet, because I hot started this one for the tutorial, it'll say HMD not ready. You're going to turn the JHMX on and you're going to click HMD and it's going to say in test and it's going to do a little display pattern. So once it's gone through one time, which it has just there, you can come down, you can press stop. All right. And it's going to say HMD go. Good to go. So we've done that part. You're then going to go to your support page. All right. So middle bottom button, go to support page and you're going to go HMD. And now we're going to align our JHMX. Okay. It's super important we do this because otherwise when you try and spot stuff on the ground, it's not going to work too good. So you're going to hit the align button, our j Hemix cross, the HUD cross, move your head with track IR roughly into the area, press and hold cage uncage. Alignment okay. So now we're going to fine tune it. So you can zoom in and out as you need to. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to use our TDC Okay, throttle designated controller up, down, left, and right to get the cross right there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Next one, I'm going to press uh, cage, uncage again. It's going to switch to roll. So if your bottom um, crosshair was on the piss like that, you can slew the angle of the crosshair. So you want to get the vertical line nice and center, nice and straight, and the horizontal Nice and straight. Once you've done both of that, zoom out and then just press align. Don't move your head away. Don't look away from the J-Hemix, don't from the screen, because you'll fuck it up and you have to do it again. All right, so you're going to hit align. Done. J-Hemix is aligned. Happy days, the targeting pod, and the J-Hemix is going to talk nicely to each other now. You're going to be able to use that to help yourself out. Okay, so if we go to our FLIR page, you can see now it says standby, and we've got some HUD symbology. I'm sorry, uh, MFD symbology. It's in standby, and we can go ahead and turn it on. And we'll discuss all this stuff on the ground just because it's easier and don't have to worry about flying. It says mask because at the moment it is currently masked. It's stowed. So how do we get our, our FLIR pod to turn on and actually show us an image? What we're going to do is you're going to hit this button here, VVSLV. What that stands for is Velocity Vector Slave. When I press that button, it's going to slew my targeting pod to my velocity vector, which is the little aircraft symbol in your HUD. I'm going to press that button now. Boom. And it is looking up that way as best it can. Okay, close enough. When your first load up, it's going to be all washed out and bright. So to adjust that, just drag your brightness levels down and your contrast to suit so you can actually see it. And now we can actually see some stuff. Right, so let's quickly run through the FLIR symbology and then we'll get up in the air and then we'll run through how to designate targets and use your targeting pod themselves. Righto, from top left all the way around, let's do a, a circuit of the, the MFD. First part is your, your zoom level. So we've got, I'm just going to pause my track IR so my head doesn't give you guys seizures. All right, so we pause here. So we've got wide field of view, zoom 1.0, and then... That is our zoom, so we're in wide field of view right now. OPR means the, uh, 
the targeting pod is operating. If it says STBY, it's in standby mode. TV is your mode of operation of the, the FLIR pod. So we've got TV mode and we've also got infrared. Okay, when you're in infrared mode, down here you've got white hot and black hot. So you can cycle between the two contrasting things to see which one gives you a better uh, target image to pick targets out. So you can switch between those. You've got reticle. All right, puts a crosshair on if you would like to have the reticle there or turn it off. We've got our uh, lat long coordinates, elevation, and our MGRS grid coordinates as well. That is there. We've got our velocity vector slave, which we discussed before. In here, we've got our UFC LST, stands for laser search track. 1688 is the laser code that your targeting pod will be looking for. And then you've also got LTD slash R, which is 1688 as well. So that's our aircraft targeting pod laser code is the bottom one. The top one is the, uh, the laser search track code that you're going to be looking for. So if you had a JTAC on the ground, uh, lasing a target on a different or on a code, so say they were using 1685, you could change your code on your laser search track to 1685, put your targeting pod in the rough area, press LST, which is that button there, and it will search on the ground looking for that laser. When it finds it, it's going to lock onto it for you. So you can buddy laze for each other. We've got setup. In the setup, pretty much the only thing you really want to muck around with is your coordinates. If you want to make those either show lat long only, MGR grid only or no coordinates to declutter your display up to you you can have all of those options so that's in your setup you got declutter which gets rid of the bottom bar which tells you your altitude in the bottom left so we're at 40 feet at the moment on our barometric altimeter we've got our mac all right 0 0.1 mac and we're doing 48 knots because that's as low as the uh the airspeed indicator goes on the horn. It doesn't go any lower than 40. So that'll be displayed there and you can declutter it by getting rid of it. LST stands for laser search track. And then menu goes back to your TAC page or whatever you want to do. Focus, you won't really have to muck around with it all. The targeting pod is pretty smart. It's going to stay focused. But if for whatever reason it did lose focus, you can uh, change your focus levels if you need to. And then you've got your zoom from zoom one to zoom two. IR, the only other difference, you've got automatic light gain. So you can turn that on and you can muck around with your uh, your light levels and your gain levels. But again, just do those. Okay, most of the time you'll be able to just adjust the brightness and contrast of your actual display and it'll be looking just fine. All right, so that's that. And zooming. Zooming, we go through that now. All this stuff we'll just cover on the ground. So when you're wanting to use your MFD. All right, we are going to make sure that we've made our MFD or our FLIR pod soy sensor of interest. We want to make it our sensor of interest. So that sensor select, sensor control switch select switch, we are going to, because it's on our left-hand display, we're going to press sensor control switch left. When I do that, you can't really see it too good, but there is a diamond. Yeah, there's a diamond there. If I switch to IR mode, you might be able to get there. You can see it a bit better. That diamond, you need the diamond. That diamond symbolizes that now when I use my TDC or my HOTAS, it's going to make the targeting pod the thing that's going to be affected. Okay, so if you don't have the diamond there, you're not controlling the thing you're looking at. The jet doesn't know which display you're looking at. Okay. If you're looking here, but you've got your HSI as soy all right you can move your tdc and press all the buttons you want it's not going to move this at all so you're going to make sure the diamonds on the appropriate thing that you want to control zooming in we've got wide field of view zoom one that's as far in as we can zoom okay you can't zoom in past that level so now we've got medium field of view zoom one and we can also go zoom two zoom one zoom two and again we're just looking at the ground just showing you how to how to work the zoom so you've got two levels of zoom on medium field of view. Then we can go one more time for narrow, zoom level one, zoom level two. So that's as far in as you can zoom. And then wide field of view has only got zoom level one. All right. So that's how you can zoom by pressing the buttons. The easier way on how to zoom is to use your radar elevation switch that we went through before. So radar, radar elevation up will zoom in. So press radar elevation once, goes to medium field of view zoom one press it again goes to zoom two press it again narrow zoom one narrow zoom two then i press radar elevation down 
and I can zoom all the way back through all of my different types of zoom levels. So just by using that HOTAS command is how you're going to zoom in and out on your targeting pod. Way easier for you. All right, and that is pretty much the basics of your targeting pod. Oh, we've also got a uh, north indication. Okay, so on the targeting pod, that point on the ground north is that way. Okay, so when you're uh, looking at the ground, you can kind of use that as a reference point to orientate yourself and which way you're looking, so where you are roughly on the ground. Cool. All right, so I'm going to see you guys in the air, and we're going to run through how to designate targets on the ground with the targeting pod in the various ways that we do it. So I'll see you guys up there in a second. All right, guys, we have just taken off, heading out of Batumi now, and we just set ourselves up in a little bit of an orbit, and we're going to quickly discuss the different varying ways that you can use the targeting pod to designate points on the ground. First thing we're going to do is velocity vector slave mode. So at the moment, our targeting pod is looking at that part right there. Okay, so that circle is where this is looking. So knowing that, we can put that circle on something on the ground and we can designate a target. So all we're going to do is we're just going to orientate our aircraft to something on the ground and we're just going to press TDC to press. Target, oh, sorry, throttle designated controller to press. Press it once and there we go. All right, so it's put a little diamond there indicating that that is where our targeting pod is looking at. And you can see on our MFD, that is where the targeting pod is looking at. So I'm just going to pause, active pause right now. So it's an active pause so we don't fly around too far, just to quickly cover some more symbology we've got there. So we've got now a range to that spot we just designated. So 17.3 nautical mile to that spot right there. That's where our targeting pod is looking, the diamond. We've also got a yardstick indicator. So that line is 565 meters in length on the ground. So when you're talking to each other, say, say you're looking at a uh, building, you could say to the north of that building, 560 meters to the north, there is a dude in a bush with a man or a man pad in a bush about to shoot it, see if you can find him and kill him. Okay, you can just use it as a, a reference to give distances to help each other talk onto a target on the ground if you're both looking with your targeting pods. Um, so we got that there. Uh, also, we've got this little diamond here. So that diamond is in relation to where the targeting pod is looking from your aircraft. So if you imagine this is our aircraft right in the center of the screen, our targeting pod from the center of our aircraft is looking off at about 11 o'clock. All right, we can confirm that because where the diamond is, is roughly 11 o'clock from our aircraft. That's important because obviously if that diamond gets down behind our aircraft, it's going to get masked because the uh, targeting pod can't look through itself. So it's going to get masked by the aircraft and you won't be able to see. So when you're doing um, orbiting an area, looking for targets to hit, you're generally going to be doing a left-hand orbit because the targeting pod is on your left-hand cheek. If you're orbiting in the right and looking, doing a right-hand orbit and you're looking down at uh, buildings on the ground here, for example, the um, targeting pod won't be able to see because your aircraft is going to be blocking it. So you're going to be in a left-hand orbit most of the time, so your targeting pod's got eyes on the area. Easier, easier to see. All right, so that is how you would designate a target with the velocity vector. So just put it in VVSL mode and then press TDC to press. If you are done looking at that target, all right, so I'm just going to unpause here. So I'm finished there. I don't want to look at that anymore. I want to reset my or rebore site my targeting pod. I can press my nose wheel steering undesignate button once and it will put it in snowplow mode and it'll just like unlock the camera and it'll wig out. All right, so it's starting to move now. It's not locked to the ground anymore. From there, I can press my velocity vector slave mode or I can double press my nose wheel steering undesignate button, double tap it, and it will reset it to velocity vector slave. So if again, if I just designate a target there, TDC to press, if I want to go straight back to velocity vector slave, so just rebore sight my, uh, my targeting pod, I just double tap nose wheel steering undesignate, and boom, there she goes. Just double tap it. 
double tap. All right, that is Velocity Vector Slave, done. Next one is using a waypoint. So we're going to slave our targeting pod to waypoint number zero, which is where we took off from. So all you gotta do on your either your HSI page, which is this bad boy, okay, on your HSI page or your SA page, both the same, you can waypoint designate. So if we go to our SA page, you've got waypoint designate as well. A uh, quick little tip for young players, if you want to switch between your SA page and your HSI page really quick, you just press sensor control switch appropriate to the display that it is on. So it's on my bottom display, so I'm going to press sensor control switch down or aft, and it's going to go to the HSI, press it again, goes to the SA page, press it again, so I can switch between the HSI and the SA page really quickly just by pressing sensor control switch to the appropriate display that your HSI SA page is on. So if it was on here, for example, if I put my SA page here, I'm going to press sensor control switch right to switch between. All right, that's it. So we're going to hit waypoint designate now. And we've slewed our target to where we took off. So that's the exact spot where we started on the, uh, the tarmac. I'm going to make sure that my targeting pod is soy. So I'm going to press sensor control switch left because remember I put it over here because I was mucking around with the SA page. So I'm going to get the diamond back over here and now I can use it's going to active pause again so we don't mask our aircraft just for the display. So now I'm looking at the waypoint. I've designated the waypoint right there. It says target so the waypoint is designated. Now I'm trying to use my TDC to move around and it's not letting me move. So two ways you can get around this. You can either press TDC to press to designate the target yourself. So I'm going to press TDC to press now. Press it once. And now I can move my target, my crosshair. All right, I can move around. Or the other way, so if I'm going to go uh, waypoint designate again. Again, it's locked to the waypoint. I can press sensor select left. I'm going to press it once. Okay, and it's going to change our mode. So at the moment we're, we're slewed to a waypoint. I'm going to press sensor select left now. And now it's gone to scene mode. All right, so this here is scene. Scene mode, when you've got the box with the dot in the middle, that is our scene mode. And then if I press sensor select left again, it's going to go to auto mode, which is also known as point track or vehicle track. And if I press it again, it goes to our waypoint. All right, waypoint or back to your INR mode. So I'm going to press TDC to press to designate a target on the ground or designate the spot on the ground. TDC to press, if you're not able to move the, the crosshair, just press TDC to press when in doubt and make sure that this is um, soy. All right, so that is that. We're going to make sure we're in air to ground mode because we're doing air to ground things. So that's gonna go back to there, put our FLIR pod back on and make sure we're back on our HSI. All right, so in air to ground mode, should have covered that before. Now I can zoom around and have a look. So down here, there should be a little Humvee cut and lapse somewhere along. Where are you? Where's my little Humvee? There he is. Cut and lapse. All right, so at the moment I'm in INR mode. I'm gonna go now, sense select left to scene mode. And then when the Humvee gets close enough to that point, I'm going to press sensor select left again. And it's in point track. And I can confirm it's in point track because it says MVTGT, moving target. And it's going to track him along. Right, so that's how you can track a moving target. As soon as it flies onto the dot in scene mode, you press sensor select to the appropriate display that your FLIR is on. And it will go to point track mode. <clears throat> um, another feature which is offset mode so I can press TDC to press while my targeting pod still following him so say he was uh, moving and I saw something over here that I wanted to look at so I can't move my targeting pod once when it's in point track you can't move your targeting pod it's locked onto that spot and the only way to move it is to undesignate the target so say I saw something let's see as he uh, comes a little bit closer I want to look at something on the ground okay I'm gonna press I've just pressed TDC to press, okay? And then all I'm gonna do is put that spot there, and I'm gonna hit 
TDC to press again. Oh, bastard. There we go. That didn't really do what I wanted it to do. Let's try that again. Alright. Boom. Boom. Alright, so you can offset the target if you need to. Not really a useful thing. You just press... Um, when you're in point track mode, this is what I do. Easiest way to do it. So point track. Alright, if you've had enough of looking at him, all you do is just press sensor select left once and it'll go back to INR. Alright, so I'm going to move this um, my FLIR pod from the left hand MFD because we've got this warning bar here, that uh, advisory B altitude. Got that lit up, so I'm going to bring that over here. And I'll put my HSI page over here. Turn the brightness back up on ooh, like that. Adjust the brightness on this. All right, so now you can see because that was blocked before. Scene. And now we're going to go our sensor select over here to get the diamond. You can't really see the diamond, but it's there. Now I'm going to go sensor select left. I'll go to auto, sensor select INR, and scene. Okay, that's the two different things. And again, so now, because I'm using my right MFD, i got to press sensor select right, or sensor control switch right to switch between the different types. Sweet, so that's how you would use point track mode if you need to spot a target. Or you spot a target on the ground, you're like, okay, I want to drop a laser guided bomb on him. Sensor select right to go to scene mode. As soon as he gets onto the dot, press it again, and it will lock him. Okay, and then you can go ahead and laze him. While that's doing that, let's quickly cover the laser and how to load that. Lazing, how to set your codes. UFC is to change the code. So at the moment, when you press the UFC button, it only brings up laser search track code, okay? The reason why is because my laser is not armed. So I've got to come down here and I need to turn on my, I need to arm the laser, LTD slash R, laser track designate slash ranging. Now I've got both options to change codes. So if I wanted to deconflict my laser code, so say there was another uh, another aircraft in the area using the same laser code and I didn't want to drop a bomb and have his laser distract my bomb and it'd go for the wrong target, I can deconflict and go 1683, for example. Put your code in and now my targeting pod laser is 1683. Same deal if he was lasing targets on the ground and he was using 1685 as his code, one six eight five. It's like Tony. There's a target down there. Put your put your uh, slew your targeting pod down to Batumi, and search for laser one six eight five. That is what you would do. So let's cover now. How you do a laser search track? So this is obviously too close, right? Too close to see much at all. But just say there was a JTAC or you had a buddy lasing a target, and he's like, "All right, I'm lasing my target down on the ground." Um, put your aircraft on laser search track on code 1685 and you'll pick it up with your your targeting pod. So we're going to do that. So to laser search track, there, remember there's no laser down there, so it's not going to pick up anything. But for example, if this was the case, you need to come down here. You're going to turn on your laser search track. Turn it on and then on your MFD, you're going to hit LST. And you'll see LST will light up. And then when it finally finds the laser, the image will reappear centered crosshair on the spot that the target or the laser is hitting. Okay, so that's how you do a laser search track. Um, how you laser a target. Okay, uh, there's a couple ways. We'll cover how auto works when we do laser guided bombing. But if I wanted to laser a target, so let's go back to old mate Humvee. Where is he? There he is. Zoom in on him. Zoom in and point track mode. Come on. There we go, we got him. All right, so I've got him locked up on my targeting pod. My targeting pod's following him. My laser is on. Confirmed on. It says laser arm when it is on. I'm going to box trigger. All right, and that's going to turn my gun trigger from shooting the gun or the missiles. It's going to shoot the laser. So I'm going to press and hold the trigger and you can see it says LTD slash R so it's flashing saying that my laser is firing so now I'm lasing that target and old mate can either use his laser search track to find the target himself 
or he can drop a bomb and the bomb will home in on my laser code 1683 and take that target out. So you can buddy laze for each other. As soon as you finish lazing, let go of the trigger. Happy days. If the trigger isn't boxed, it will be in auto mode. And so if you're doing a bomb drop with a laser guided bomb, the laser will turn on automatically a predetermined distance from the bomb about to hit the target. It'll turn itself on and turn itself off so you don't have to worry about lazing a target. All right, so it just takes the, the pilot factor out of things. Right, that is that. Happy days, laser search track, laser designation, all that stuff. Now we're going to go into the cool stuff. So J Hemix, using the J Hemix to designate targets. So I'm just going to go ahead and press nosewheel steering undesignate twice and twice again. So now we're slewed back up here. All right. I still have, even though it's really hard, my targeting pod is soy right the mo at the moment. And at the moment in my J hammocks, I don't have a crosshair or anything. So I can use my targeting pod, uh, sorry, my J hammocks to designate a target on the ground. So how you do that is I'm gonna press sensor control switch forward and I'm gonna get the dot in the HUD. Okay, so the dot in the HUD means that my HUD is the center of interest. And now if I move my head, my J hammocks has got this little circle looking thingy here. I can put this circle on a target. All right, we'll go over here because my targeting pod will be able to see it. So I can look over somewhere over here. Let's have a look at that right there. Put it there, press TTC to press. Look at my targeting pod. And I just slewed my targeting pod over there with my Johamix. All right, and that's really, really helpful to do because if a SAM shoots at you from the ground and you see the smoke plume come up, you can slew your targeting pod to the area where the SAM shot at you from and find it, right? You can use it quickly, lock your targeting pod onto the area, get out of the way, evade the missile, extend away to a safe area, and then come back and ruin the SAM's day. Little caveat for using this little trick, okay? So at the moment, he's all good. I've locked him up. I've designated my target. Okay, target is designated with the J hammocks. Now I'm heads down, I'm like, all right, cool. There's a little man pad in this tree here, a little uh, infrared stinger shooting guy trying to kill me. I wanna move my targeting pod to this guy and zoom in a little bit more. He's in this area somewhere. So I'm gonna press my TDC switch right now. Okay, I'm gonna press TDC. Up, down, left, right, doesn't matter. What the hell just happened? All right, so now my targeting pod went from looking there, it's now where are you? Where have you gone? It's up there. There it is right there. Okay, all I did was just tapped it. Why did that happen? It happened because the HUD is still soy. So when you got the HUD soy, I can move the TDC in the HUD. Okay, I can move the, the crosshair and my targeting pod moves to the crosshair. So you can also designate targets like that as well. Just slew it on there into the area. All right, but if I wanted to keep my target down there, I'm going to press nozzle steering undesignate. I'm going to come back over to here. I'm going to press TDC to press. Now I'm going to make my flare pod soy again, sensor control switch right. Now I can use my TDC and zoom in and look. Okay, so make sure if you are using your hammocks and you want to use your targeting pod, switch back so that the FLIR pod is the sensor of interest because the aircraft doesn't know that you've gone from designated stuff with the your hammocks. It doesn't know you're looking here and you'd want to control the FLIR pod. It still thinks you're using the, the HUD. Okay, so it's not that smart. It can't tell where you're looking. So you've got to tell it what you want to use. And that uh, will save your life, trust me. It will save your life knowing that. All right, cool. So that is how you designate a target with the J Hammocks on the ground. And then the last one is we're going to use the SA page to find a SAM site. So if we come over to, I'm going to bring up my, turn my EWR on, because it was off. You see, we got an SA6 off to our, going to unpause here. So we're flying around. We've got an SA6. So it's in a little bit of a climb, so we get a bit of altitude here. 
There we go. So we did have an SA6 somewhere over here. We just lost signal of it. But we know there's an SA6 out that way somewhere. What you can do is knowing that uh, little SA page trick, we're going to switch to our SA page. And on the SA page, it shows you the threat rings of SAM. So we know there's an SA6. That's what that number six means there with the circle around it. SA6 and it just popped up. There it is. And there's also an SA2 out there. So the circle is the range of the threat range. So you don't want to fly your aircraft inside that circle. Otherwise the SAM will shoot at you. And the number relates to the actual SAM. So it's an SA6 and an SA2 in those two circles. So we are going to try and find that SAM site using our SA page and our target input. So if you notice here now behind our aircraft, that little box is where our targeting pod is looking. So if you look, our targeting pod is masked, the diamond is looking behind us. So that spot on the ground we were looking at before, right, there it is there, that is replicated by that diamond. So we're going to make our FLIR pod soy. I'm gonna undesignate the target, go back to the velocity vector slave, come back over here. And now we're going to press undesignate to go to bore site. Oh, clear pod first. Undesignate, and now make sure we're still in uh, soy over here because we want to use that. I'm going to slew my targeting pod down. All right, you can see it's doing its thing. If I just zoom it out so you can actually see, targeting pod is slewing down. All right, we can see stuff on the ground there. Now, that square is moving. See that? I'm gonna put the square. So I'm just using my TDC, slewing the targeting pod over the top of the number six. All right, so in that area, I'm gonna press TDC depress now to designate the spot on the ground. Let's get it there. All right, so now our targeting pod is looking in the rough area of that SAM site. Now let's see if we can see the SAM. Zoom in. Do we see a SAM site? So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to... There it is. There it is. It's going to put you in the ballpark to scan around. So there is the SA6 site. Can't really. You can definitely make out there's a radar down there. That is the SA6. Right, go to Black Hot. Confirm there is launches and stuff down there. So we just found the SA6 without him shooting at us using the SA page and our targeting pod. All right, so the next one, we're going to use our J Hemix to try and find. All right, to try and find the SA2. So let's go ahead, auto throttle off. Is that locking us up? Uh, hard. So the SA2 is looking at us. SA6, sorry. So we're going to try and find the SA2. I'm going to just turn that down. It's so loud these days. So it's going to turn around. So I'm just going to skirt around the outskirts of the SA6. So you could do the same trick to find the SA2, but we're going to use our Johamix to lock on and just visually acquire it with our uh, Johamix and look for the missile, the missile smoke when it's fired at us and then slew our targeting pod that way. And then that will conclude the Atflir tutorial. And then we're going to get into actually using laser gutter bombs and all the rest of it. All right, so our SA2 now. It's gonna put our SA page here. No, our, that SA page here. Okay, so the SA2 is looking at us. So is the SA6. And I can tell because we've got the dotted lines from the SA2 there. So somewhere over there is an SA2. So we're gonna start flying over this way. And we're gonna make it shoot at us. So I've got my HUD as soy. 
What's fired? SA2 is fired. So I'm zooming in. I can see the smoke. Put it in the rough area, and we're going to get the fuck out of here. Alright, so I haven't tried to move my um, TDC or anything. All I've done is just quickly locked it. I'm evading the missile, trashing the shot, so it can't kill me. And it's given away its position now. Altitude. Altitude. Just extend away. Out of harm's way. And then we'll uh, look around and chuck a lefty, left turn. So while we're doing that, I'm going to make my, uh, my flare pod soy again. Sensor select right. So that I don't bump the stick or bump the, uh, the spot on the ground like we did before when I moved it and it zoomed it up over into the top corner of the HUD. And now we've uh, successfully defeated that missile shot at us from the SA-2. It shot a missile. We saw the smoke plume. I'm going to zoom around and have a look. So if we zoom out here, we should see... In that rough area. Somewhere over here is the... No. There you go. In that area, roughly. So we just had a quick go and then we just uh, obviously Got the hell out of there. That's... Where are you guys? Clouds now. Goddamn clouds. All that's far as we can do it again. If we can't find them... They're definitely down there somewhere. Alright, so we'll do it again. So I'm going to undesignate. Alright, HUD is soy again. We'll do it again, and we've got a little bit of time here, because it's going to shoot, and it'll take a while to get to us. So this time, we're going to sweeten the deal up, and get it actually all squared on. Bingo. So I'm just lining up Bingo. the SA-2 with my Johamix. So I know it's going to be roughly around here somewhere. Wait for the launch. Go. Missile out. There we go. Put that on there. Quickly going to go sweeten that up. All right, we've got him locked. Let's get evasive. Chaff out. And not hit the ground. Stage shit then. That was close. That was close. Alright, so now we've got that spot on the ground. Look back around. There they are. There's the SA2 site, which you guys saw the video on how to kill it. So that's how you find an SA2. If you don't have, because sometimes they can turn the threat rings off in the mission editor, so it won't always have the threat rings to cheese that uh, way. So if you don't have a threat ring, you can just use that method. So draw the fire of the SA2. Right, the SAM site. So there's a smoke over there from the launch. And slew your right tiny pot into the area. Cool. All right, so that's it, guys. I hope that one uh, made sense to you guys and put that stuff into practice. So that the, the better you get at doing that stuff really quickly, the more combat effective you're going to be in doing close air support. So if you like the video, super appreciate it. If you would hit the like button, got any questions or comments, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, um, or stuff that I may have missed or other cool tricks that you know, uh, throw them in the comments. Love hearing from all you guys, all the uh, knowledge that everyone's got, because I don't know everything, 100% do not, always learning. And if there's a better way to do stuff, or a, a quicker way to do stuff, I want to know all about it because that's what I that's what I want. You want to do shit the long way or the wrong way, do it right, 
and do it quickly. Cool. All right. Last but not least, if you haven't subscribed, I know it's kind of a big plug, but if you haven't subscribed, really appreciate it if you would hit the, uh, the red subscribe button. If you want to get notified when a video goes live, click the little bell uh, or notifications button next to it, and it'll pop up on your uh, YouTube alerts saying that a video has come out from me. Sweet. All right, guys. Catch us on the next one where we start doing the cool shit, blowing stuff up. Right on. Peace.